today we have a really special guest with us. We have Justin Dunn, and he specializes in horse training for wild horses, also known as Mustangs, and horses with undesirable behavioral issues. Right now, he has 15 horses consisting of BLM Mustangs, rescue horses, and some once considered untrainable horses. So he trains for a higher purpose, and his horses help him help others. Um, his horses um, have helped at camps for children with cancer for the past six years and countless clinics for people wanting to learn more about his horsemanship. Justin is recognized as a trainer and a clinician in a national level. You might have seen him and his travels all over the country sharing with people what horses have shared with him. So uh, he believes in humane treatment of horses, never using pain or fear to force submission. And um, he uses his Justin Dunn bitless bridles. It's manufactured by Weaver Le Leather. And his uh, bridle is used by thousands of people all over the world. So thank you, Justin, for joining us. And you're, you're joining us from your ranch in North Carolina, is that correct? Yes, yes, um, Aberdeen, North Carolina. We uh, flew in last night, so a little bit tired, but yeah, we're here. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> great, great. So. Um, as you know, we're just talking today a little bit about what you do to keep the horse first, and it sounds like that's a big um, topic you, in general, just carry on in your life with your animals, too. Do you mind telling us a little bit about how, I mean, it's pretty interesting how you don't use bits or spurs in any of your training. Can you go a little bit on that? Yeah, absolutely. Twelve years ago, I started a trail ride business in the Rocky Mountains, and on a shoestring budget, I needed horses. And uh, some of them were free. And if you know anything about getting free horses, they're never free. Uh, there was a lot of work involved. And uh, I, I ended up becoming a horse trainer uh, and trained 48 horses in the first year of trail ride business. And word got out, so I started training. And then I started learning uh, streamlined methods to, to get horses uh, trained, so to speak. But as this evolved, I realized I was creating willing partners to help me help others. Mm -hmm. And the best philosophy I came up with is trade places with that horse and treat them as I'd want to be treated if the roles were reversed. Because mm -hmm. in essence, uh, that's what happens. In each training session, uh, how I treat them is how they would treat me. Uh, when we put them in that mindset or that dominant thought pattern, uh, that's that's how they'll understand uh, and I'll understand what we're doing together uh, to serve that purpose. Okay, great. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think that's amazing. It's really, really inspiring that you do that. I know that's not done a lot in the industry, so I would love to hear more about how you work with your Mustangs in particular on uh, just bringing the best out in them. I know that you work with just helping them have a purpose, getting them to the best uh, potential they can. Right. So in the trail ride business, I got to observe many, many people riding horses I knew very personally. And I wanted to protect my horse, number one. So I designed uh, what's now called the Justin Dunn Bitless Bridle. And the reason is, I, I'll call them tourists or beginners, they'll balance on the reins, they will, they're not centered in the saddle. I learned everything that, that a beginner would do, not necessarily uh, intentionally. Right. And they would just come out to ride my horses in the mountains and you know, going up a hill, they'll balance on the reins to pull themselves forward. Uh, with a bit in the horse's mouth, it was very painful and uh, undesirable behavior would, would arise. So using the bitless bridle, gave a larger margin of error so when you talk about mustangs i introduced mustangs into my trail ride business from day one and uh, i have to invite that mustang into the human element is what i like to refer to it uh, that horse was born in the wild they're taught to think from day one they analyze everything in life and death so when i bring them into a round pen straight out of a holding pen from the government uh, they're still in that mindset of guarded, scared, fear, confusion, anxiety. Uh, I have to take all that away. So, so I study their mind uh, more than anything else. Uh, I pay attention to the mind more, more than anything else. If I can get that mind to uh, 
free up, not have resistance. Tension in the body will go away. So fast forward to the trail ride business. I have to have that mindset and a dominant thought pattern where they are not fearing anything that human's ever going to do. And we can essentially accomplish the mission, which is to take green or beginner people trail riding in the mountains and then have a a safe, successful time doing that. Horses, number one, business, number two. So if my horse is not enjoying it, uh, it's it's not, we're not going to do it. Uh, Mm -hmm. Enrichment for both horse and person, Mm -hmm. that's the goal, that's the mission. Uh, whatever it is, if we're trail riding or if we're doing a therapy session, uh, I have to have that horse understand that that is their choice, their purpose. And by designing a specific training method, I've empowered that horse to have a voice, to reveal to me their purpose, their calling, their desires for this life. And they actually assist me willingly mm-hmm. to do the uh, fulfill the purpose that we're, we're after. Mm-hmm. So, for example, you're talking about how um, you spend time with them, get them to, to be kind of desensitized to you, just to understand it's a trust with you. How many sessions and how long of sessions would it go, like from a beginning of a horse in that state? Like how much time do you spend with them before they, you know, because um, usually in the beginning, right, I imagine they're thinking this isn't too fun. And how do you build that trust um, with them? Um, and how long would that take, would you say? Okay, that's a great question. In, in our training, we understand that that horse is an individual. So to give, a, give you a blanket answer on how much time it would take, it depends on the horse, the individual horse. So the, the training method, I'll call, but I, I like to call it the, you know, creating a partnership. Partnership, a will- okay. uh, It can take anywhere from three to five days on a wild horse to 30 days, 60 days to two years. It just depends on the individual horse. I've had some, um, most of the people that know me know Cinnamon Girl. Uh, She's one of my Mustang mares that's more famous than I'll ever be, but she (laughs) took a video of her and my daughter. That horse was 25 days out of the wild in that video. It's just a matter of that individual. But what what I really like to do is I like to present what I expect from the horse. So a lot of it's myself. uh, And that's what I teach a lot of my clients is, you know, you have to pay attention to you. Uh, We have to present to that horse what we expect. And based on their feedback, we make changes within ourselves and represent it. And as you start to see that horse reveal and un- unfold uh, that relationship starts to transfer energy together I-, I call it two pathways of communication one is interaction which is outward intra action which is inward uh, okay. there's a lot of unseen things in communication with horse but they're felt uh, they're intuitive and each individual horse is going to reveal different things and and if, if the, tr- the trained eye and mind um, will actually open uh, resistance in our mind resistance in their mind goes away tensions in the body relax and real communication starts to happen and that horse will willingly every single time step up and say yes I like this I can sustain life like this and I definitely want to be involved in this because it's fulfilling it's enriching for the horse for the human I'll, I'll in our therapy sessions I'll set the stage and then I just kind of back out and I watch it uh, uh, happen, and it's a very beautiful thing. I haven't really figured out exactly how to put it into words, but uh, that's that's probably the best way I could explain it up to this point. That's but I'm, great, yeah. I'm studying every day, every every time that I can get with a horse or a human. Uh, I love the psychological aspects. Uh, I love the uh, spiritual aspects, uh, and when we can combine all those equally and allow that horse to work in their sweet spot i'll say that when we can allow that to happen that horse is going to step up and and uh, do things that i can't do uh, a therapist can't do a trainer another trainer can't do it's unique to that horse and that human and it it, it happens the way it's supposed to happen uh, it's not forced um I, i'll get going on this tangent if we don't <laughs> okay yeah. 
You're doing good. You're doing good. Yeah. So um, while you're talking about that, for example, because um, I know it's important for the horse to have a good time when a relationship with you. Um, so I know and when horses are running around, they will buck, but it doesn't mean that they're upset. And if you're working with a horse that bucks, a lot of people think that's a really unsafe, very, un, um, you want to stop that behavior right away. How would you deal with a, a horse that's bucking while you're riding? That is not showing, I mean, of course, it's not showing, it's like more of a happy thing um, when they're just excited. Like, well, how would you deal with that situation? Sure. sure. Okay. So my mind just went to 10 different answers, but I'll, I'll... <laughs> Okay. <coughs> we're on a time. Um, horses bucking generally when the client calls and says my horse started bucking for no reason uh it's probably pain uh um, yeah, okay. pain issue uh, and then we could go way off into that but but uh, <laughs> uh, if i'm riding along and a horse just starts bucking i'm gonna think pain uh the other thing is once you start to understand and know that particular horse um uh, let me back up a little bit in our training i, I never have bucking horses uh, okay. out of out of fear, a horse will buck out of fear, mm -hmm. a horse will buck out of pain. Um, bucking is just not an issue. I, I never want to show a horse to buck. If he's never done it, he's probably never going to do it. Uh, then lies the equipment that we use. So pain. A lot of people use equipment that causes pain. The only way the horse has learned to get a release from that pain is to buck. Uh, that's or rear up, flip over backwards, run off. Those are like three worst case scenarios, most undesirable behavior uh, that you would ever want. Mm -hmm. But it's probably been a lot of signs leading up to that. The horse has probably been trying to say, right. you know, say uh, I need a release from this. this. This is getting too much. Um, that's why I design equipment and don't use certain equipment. So the horse doesn't concentrate on that equipment or, or there's a larger margin of error for beginners not to make a mistake to cause that horse to buck. Uh, now, you asked a question, and what would I do if I was riding a horse and started bucking? Um, I'm probably going to try to transfer that energy into the ground rather than keep it in a spot. Most people will try to hold a horse back from doing that. I'm probably going to try to push them through it. Let's just go, go, go. Let's get that energy transferred into the ground. Let's, let's let this out. Wherever it's got to get out, let's get it out. I generally see the signs coming. 99% of the time, I'll see the signs coming, and I can put that energy into the ground before it ever explodes into a buck. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, as far as experience goes and, and understanding horses, uh, pain is generally bucking. So we eliminate, and I'll just say it, eliminate a bit. Mm -hmm. You're going to free up a lot of resistance in that mind, tension in the body. Give yourself a larger margin of error to make a mistake. I can pick up on a rein pretty hard mm -hmm. with my bit bridle and, and it's just basically snapping a finger getting attention mm -hmm. uh, put a bit in there and did the same pressure it's going to compound that by about a thousand and uh, that's a check mark against you at, at the least and uh, it's it's undesirable behavior at the most so it's one of those things where you uh, you want to pay attention to the equipment that you use that way you eliminate any possibility that that horse is concentrating on equipment rather than the question i'm asking i see that's really that's gold right there just saying like you know just make the relationship between you and the horse and take away those extra parts that can cause damage to the relationship so <laughs> yeah so, um yeah that's great and um so i i just wanted to talk a little bit more about i mean in general like it's your routine there of um keeping the animal first um, we were talked about kind of like what you do with a new horse, but in general, what's a great tip for people who just, they've been in the, the circuit, maybe just working their horses, but they want to build a re better relationship with their horse. Besides, I know you just said, you know, take away the bit. Um, what, uh, what other tips can you offer um, just trying to build a better relationship with their horse? I'll use a term called being rather than doing. Uh, I, I specialize in wild mustangs. So that wild Mustang comes into the human element, uh, my pen. Yeah. Um, they're, they're out of their element, obviously. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I'll go down there to that pen 
and sometimes I can't even touch this particular horse yet. He, ha he hasn't um, opened enough to, to allow me to do that. So I'll just be with him or her. And being, not doing, has a very powerful um, advantage in building a relationship. That horse is taking notes. And I, I teach my students um, training log. Take notes. Uh, mm -hmm. And physically take notes. Uh, write in the comments how this session went. I'll go have a being session where I just go spend or invest time with a horse, just being with them. And if they want to smell me, that's great. If they want to, if, if I can touch them and I just want to pet on them, both sides, forehead, whatever, uh, I'll, I'll learn about that horse. Mm -hmm. Just be. So one advantage of building a relationship with a horse if you care more or being a leader to that horse if you care more about the horse than being the leader and you focus on that horse's comfort levels his his uh, desires what he enjoys or she enjoys sometimes i'll take a horse wild horse and go hand graze with them i mean got a halter i got a lead rope and we just walk out in the pasture deep grass and i'll just hang out with them let them do that uh, then I may throw in some questions. You know, I developed a series of questions I ask every horse. It's kind of like a mantra. It's something that we can always go to. If I need to trigger a body response or relaxation. The point is, when I focus on the comfort and well-being of that horse, they see what I'm focusing on. They know what I'm focusing on. It's them. It's their, their security. Their, they understand that I care more about them than anything else that we do. Doesn't matter if it's therapy, uh, competitions, and anything. Uh, anytime I did do a competition, I made sure my horse was enjoying himself above and beyond uh, winning that competition. I, I never did really care about competition. Uh, I wanted to do it to experience it. I wanted the horse to do it to experience it, learn and grow and develop, uh, nothing more. If, if I felt that my horse wasn't enjoying something uh, at the, uh, at the risk of losing, would be fine with me. Let's go enjoy this rather than try to win something. He doesn't understand that. <laughs> uh, but what I do understand is where my focus is. So my advice to somebody that's getting into a certain discipline, whatever it is, barrel racing, roping, doesn't matter. If you really want a relationship with your horse and you really want that winning edge, my opinion, uh, develop that willing partner that wants to be with you. And man, they'll rise 10 times your expectations. So building trust, building that bond and trust with your horse and your, your animal. That's, yeah, I, that's great. I think that's, I think that's gold there too. It's just got to build that relationship. That's where it all breaks down to just the basics, the fundamentals of where it starts out. So I'll give you an example, Kelly. Okay. I got horses that help me do what I do. I can't do it without them. They're my team. I really understand and know that. So I'm going to take every care that I can to nurture them, to, to help them grow and develop, and, and let them know who I really focus on. It doesn't matter what we're doing. They're number one. Everything else, number two. I'm an outfitter as well, Rocky Mountains of Colorado. Uh, there's an instance where I took a horse and uh, went up to a pretty high summit, and a storm come in, about 15 minutes, snowed, sleet, grapple, uh, muddied everything up. So coming back down that hill, it was very slippery. We're getting ready to go off the edge. I was getting ready to go off. Horse got under me, centered me, kept me on, and we, and we did okay. But the point is, he could have just said, I don't like you. And right? the other, I hit the dirt, flopped off the mountain, and I wouldn't yeah. be seeing this video. I can give you many like that. <laughs> but the point is, you take care of your horse, the horse will definitely take care of you when you need them the most. That's, yeah, that's great. And I think, I think a lot of horse people out there can say it with ones that have good relationships that their horses have helped them in a lot of situations where they felt like, I mean, they fell off and the horse, they could have landed on them, but then they, they don't because they feel you under them and they saved you. There's a lot of situations I've heard out there. You probably heard them all <laughs> too. So. Well, in therapy sessions, whenever I have a thought enter my mind, I'll think, 
wow, is that, you know, I have a child with a prosthetic leg and I put them on a horse and we're going to do a cattle drive. How thought will go into my mind, can this horse handle this? Is this too much stress for my horse? Mm -hmm. And I literally have them look over and wink at me and, and I'm thinking, <laughs> that just happened. <laughs> <laughs> the assurance that if I've prepped them, you know, whatever we do today prepares our horses for tomorrow and ourselves. I just have to trust that, yes, I've prepared this horse in every way that I possibly know how, but then they take up the slack that I can't. So not necessarily me, but somebody I entrust on their back, mm -hmm. on their back, mm -hmm. they're going to help me with that in the time I need the most. That, that is what we are about. That's, that's horsemanship right there. Whenever you prepare a horse and practice, you're gonna have confidence. The horse, same thing. We prepare, we practice, that equals confidence. Uh, when that happens, you really can go and do anything you wanna do and never have a worry. Yeah. So yeah, that's, um, that is amazing how they see that you they trust you to have someone else on their back. So they know you wouldn't have someone on their back that you wouldn't trust. That's okay. So that's, that's huge. That's a really good point too. That's what's yeah. made me successful. Mm -hmm. It's the whole prep, prayer, practice. I have the confidence to do whatever I need to do. Uh, ask them to help me. They'll willingly do it. There's never an issue. Uh, I mean, it's kind of common sense. If, if a horse don't want to do it and we try to force it, undesirable behavior, undesirable, you know, things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. So prepare properly. We practice it. We'll have the confidence. Horse will have the confidence to do what it is that our mission, whatever it is. And uh, that, that's the key to horsemanship, in my opinion. Care about the horse first. He sees what you're focusing on. He'll step up and reveal things to us that we never would have found any other way. Uh, I don't use spurs. You mm -hmm. mentioned, I don't want that horse concentrating on spurs. If I can get a horse, and I do, to get off of a calf muscle pressure, why go anymore? Mm -hmm. So that horse feels that pressure. He just responds as a light, low tone question. Uh, when he does, pressure goes away as a thank you. That's the way our conversation rolls forever. If I mm -hmm. ask that horse, back up it's just a simple light pressure they back up release if i need to side pass it's calf muscle on there light pressure they do it release there's no they'll never ever come into their mind thinking this is going to hurt mm -hmm. or, what's he going to do next to hurt me their mind isn't like that their mind is saying we're just conversating and their mind is saying what are we doing next Okay, what are we going to do next? All right, what are we doing next? Mm -hmm. More, keep that curiosity going. Yeah. Uh, I've really learned how to uh, create curiosity in a horse. And when we get that, oh my gosh, they're in a growth mindset. They're ready to, to, to do. They meet you at the gate. They're ready to do it. <laughs> and then they're like, yes, this is my life. This is what I love. And I got kids. And, and they don't want to do anything else. You know, they want yeah. to do what I'm asking them to do. And yeah. it's a beautiful a fulfilling uh, experience for everyone involved, horse, human, uh, yeah. human. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know, I mean, just the way you're talking too, I can see it's passionate. It's a passionate topic for you too. And you have this, um, this private group where you have a training for um, some select, for some select riders and other people who are involved in horsemanship. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about your your private group that you have uh, for training? Yeah, uh, I have Justin Dunn Mustang Horsemanship public page. I started doing training sessions on the weekend uh, for about six, nah, I went to about 16 weeks. Uh, it grew to 7,000 consistent following watchers because I was doing those live. It got overwhelming. Three or 400 comments would come in. So I switched it to a private paid membership group. I don't advertise it yet. And uh, we keep it about 100 people. And I do a, a Wednesday night live Q&A and then a Sunday training session. Um, I think we went through spring training series. So I show what all we do with our horses coming off winter pasture to prepare them for the spring and summer season. Uh, and then we do a uh, therapy program. Uh, 
therapy sessions. So that's coming soon. There's a video series on a therapy session with some kids that we did. Uh, how to train a therapy horse, therapy for a therapy horse. Many topics that will pertain to many uh, disciplines and many people and building relationship with horses. Uh, it's called Adventures with the Enlightened Horseman. So that's a private Facebook group uh, that are designed to support horsemen, horsewomen, and uh, kind of be a safety net for people that are just getting into horses and, and may not know where to turn. Uh, they can ask me, they have access to me live and behind the scenes. Uh, if there's not a video, we've archived videos, thousands of hours of videos. If there's not one in there that pertains to your particular situation, the great thing about being in the group, ask me, I'll make a video for you. Yeah, that's great. And I know um, just after this um, meeting here with you, um, we're offering a, a one membership to one lucky person who is really interested in joining the group. Um, and so we will have a link on the side here by the video. Go to Justin Dunn Mustang Horsemanship, comment, uh, mention this show, and I'll put you in my private membership group called Justin Dunn Adventures with the Enlightened Horseman. All right. So also, I think we're going to give away, a, sounds like a, a Britless Bridal. Is that correct? Yes. If somebody just goes to Justin Dunn Mustang Horsemanship, and they type in, I want a Justin Dunn bitless bridle or something to that effect. You can just type in bitless bridle, pick me, and uh, I'll, I'll pick somebody and I will send them a bitless bridle. Sounds great. So it sounds like we're running uh, to the end of our interview time. So I just want to say thank you so much, Justin, for joining us today and just sharing that information, um, helping people understand a better relationship with their horses, too. So. Appreciate your time today. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me on your show, Kelly. All right. And don't forget to check out Justin Don on his website. And um, some people are going to get some free gifts today. Have a good one.